tonight. I'd like to welcome you to the next section. Um, John Stoey, co-lead for the server project. We have KY Thune here to talk about the uh, Big Basin Flexible GPU Expander. Anyway. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, hi. Welcome to the OCP workshop for Big Basin Flexible GPU Expander. My name is KY Thune. Uh, I'm a hardware engineer from Facebook. Uh, I'll start off this uh, presentation with the introduction of Big Basin. And we'll look at its architecture and how it's been deployed in the data center. And finally, I actually have a, I want to share improvement and upgrade with regards to the current Big Basin topology. So at Facebook, uh, we are committed in uh, advancing the field of AI research uh, in disciplines such as machine learning and deep learning, computer vision, augmented and virtual reality, video and image processing. We believe that close integration between the hardware and software is needed if we, want, if we begin to uh, tackle more challenging problems in this field. So in 2016, we contributed Big Sur in OCP Summit, right, and have been using it to do our AI work. Very sensitive. Okay, so today we are uh, we'll be contributing Big Basin. So you may ask, you know, within one year, you know, what happened? I mean, do we obsolete Big uh, Big Sur so soon? What's going on over here, right? So uh, to answer these questions, I would like to invite my co-speaker, uh, Rob Ober, to come to talk about the GPUs used in uh, Big Basin. Rob. Hi. Um, oh, let me, if I can borrow that. <laughs> sure. Excellent. So, um, about a year ago, so we had, we had this platform. It was introduced last year. Um, and about a year ago, we introduced, uh, we went from this guy that you may be familiar with if you play with GPUs in the data center. There are only so many of you who do. Um, to an extraordinarily powerful new platform, um, the P100 SXM2 form factor with NVLink. Um, wow, this thing's stuck on. Um, and the, the changes in performance are pretty profound here. The uh, just, <laughs> wow, this is. Yeah, just just yeah. use the keyboard. Yeah, okay, we'll use the keyboard. We'll go low tech. We'll go low tech. <laughs> um, the, the performance, just the raw floating point performance that goes straight to uh, deep, learning, um, deep learning applications, the frameworks and the computation, is a profound change all on its own. But we increase the register file size, which allows, uh, allows more efficient processing of more complex neural nets as well, and maintaining the, the transient data within the GPU. Um, and that helps performance as well. The memory bandwidth, which is one of the most correlated things with deep learning training throughput, is phenomenally improved. Um, 732 gigabytes, that's bytes per second, of memory bandwidth in the GPU. Um, and the interconnect bandwidth so that the GPUs can communicate with each other, which is a critical step, again, in deep learning training for uh, some of the like, gradient descent, you know, all reduce, some of the really critical steps. Again, a massive performance improvement. And the memory size got bigger so that you could actually store um, bigger models, so more complex neural network models, and have more training data within the memory, so again, higher throughput. And the net result of all of that um, was implemented in this new form factor, which is not a PCIe card. Um, and it's, it required this form factor because it's higher power, and it also has complex signaling coming out of the back, the NVLink um, topology here, which is a hybrid cube mesh fabric between the GPUs, again, 20 gigabytes per second per link, uh, 16 links, bidirectional. The, the bandwidth is phenomenal. This is very complex signaling. So the result of changing to this new form factor really means that 
a whole new system was needed. And uh, face, uh, Facebook was up to that task. So let me hand it back. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. So yeah, if, as, as Rob mentioned, right, we want to take advantage of these new uh, modules that NVIDIA has been created. So we proceed to create Big Basin. Uh, our design objectives for Big Basin remains uh, the same like Big Sur. We want it to be open, where we make full contribution to OCP. The Big Basin is to be disaggregated, uh, whereby it has flexible architecture to support uh, different topologies and uh, being a modular design that allow diff major system components to scale up independently. So Big Basin is a 3 OU chassis. It is Open Rack V2 compatible. It has eight GPUs on it. Each GPU consumes 300 watt TDP. And uh, Big Basin is built like a uh, JBOC, uh, similar to Lightning. It needs a head node, and we are using uh, Leopard for, for this. So let's look at the major components that make up Big Basin. We have the outer enclosure. Oh, OK, this is where this comes in. Right, we have the outer enclosure, which is actually a metal enclosure. This inner enclosure over here, if you imagine these things like the old style matchbox, this is how they look, uh, how, how, how they are being encapsulated. Then on top of that, we have a sliding shelf, a sliding tray for the baseboard, right? Uh, for PCBAs, we have the baseboard, as you can see over here, right? The mid-plane board, the I.O. board, the PCIe cards that connects the head node. And for power, uh, you can see over here, you know, the bus bar comes, uh, power comes in from pro 12 volts, move down to the mid-plane board, and then through its HSC, and then flows down to the base board. So let's look at the individual PCBAs. So the base board has eight GPUs, right? You can see them with the big gigantic heat sinks, right? And then uh, four, four PCIe switches, uh, four PCIe slots, actually hosting the PCIe cards that connect to the head node, right? The mid-plane board will have the BMC, the CPLD, fan connectors, HSCs, and Actually, this is a clock circuit here. So we have the PCI retirement card. This card is actually a slightly modified version that, of the retirement card that we are using in Lightning. Right? Then we have a bridge card, which is a passive card that connects the retirement card through Minisas cables. We shall show you how, how they go about. Right? The I.O. board over here is to bring the UART power button and debug port from the plain BMC to the front. So this is a you know, quick overview of how the IPMB bus goes about. right? So generally, we want the head node BMC to connect to the mid-planes BMC. And through that, we use, make use of the retirement card, mini SAS cable, PCIe bridge card, and then goes all the way down. And the mid-plane VMC being connected to multiple peripherals allow the head node VMC to be able to communicate to mid-plane VMC for different configuration of the peripherals or obtain any, any information about them. Okay. Now for the PCIe architecture, right? In the PC, for PCIe, we actually for, we, we offer two topologies depending on your system use. Right. For the first topology, we have the head node connecting in a daisy chain fashion uh, to all the PCI switches on the baseboard. And each of these PCI switch connects two GPUs. Right. So over here, again, you see this is where the uh, PCIe card and bridging card and mini SAS cables come in. And this part is also a PCIe card mini SAS cable 
and bridge card. So it's actually doing an external loop, right? And then of course over here you have two internal loops, right? So topology two, right? We, by configuring the uh, retirement card to a two by two by eight, right? We are we are able to split this one by sixteen to two by eight, whereby we connect to the bridge card at slot two and slot four of Big Basin. Now this forms a very distributed uh, connectivity to the pool of GPUs that's residing on the baseboard. So if you look at the arrangement, I mean, if you are look, standing right in front of the rack and look at how the uh, big basin is being connected for topology one and topology, they look like that, right? Very distinct, right? You have topology one, go in, look back, and then topology two, head node split to two. So Big Basin is designed to allow quick repairs at the data center to minimize system downtime, right? Uh, you know, given the uh, introduction on how the IPMB bus is being connected, its telemetry is, assess is accessible from its head node. So uh, in our data center, you know, deploying Leopard, it's a uh, you know, day in, day out job for, for the folks over there. So for, for those, uh, that puts with big basin on it is not much. Is actually deploying is not much different from the existing servers. It just simply come with GPUs. So the next few slides, uh, I would like to talk about you know serviceability of big basin. If you have gone to the booth and you have seen those th that big basin, I would call it big baby. We really, they are really big. Okay, so I like to show about you know how. We assemble a big basin chassis, and maybe the, the, I mean the procedure is actually quite simple. It's just that you know you, you appreciate it when you actually do it when when you you have to react to to a, to a uh, problem in the data center. Right. So uh, I mean yeah, for the baseboard, you know you just drop down to the sliding tray, slide it in, and screw thumb screw, but uh, I believe you all, I'm not sure if you guys carried one of these. This is like <laughs> heavy, <laughs> really heavy, right? I mean, this is as good as my seven-year-old child, <laughs> right? Yeah. Then thereafter, right, uh, we lock down the card guides, right? And then, you know, we pop, open up the cap, you know, lose some thumb screws to put in the PCIe cards, right? Um, the mid plane board is uh, a bit simpler. It's actually lighter, not, not as heavy as the baseboard, right? But in a similar fashion, again, you know, drop down, slide, thumb screws, right? Then uh, attaching the bus bar clip to the mid plane board is, you know, first you attach it to the back of the enclosure, and then for all these lugs, you connect it together. You do need the screws here because these are very high current. I/O board will be very simple, but you know the motion is again the same: drop, slide, screw. Right, and for the I/O carrier uh, attaching to the in inner chassis, well, again drop, slide, but this time a bit different. You lock a plunger. Right. So with a little bit of cable dressing, attach the fan, fan uh, modules. You assemble big basin. So next, I'd like to share an improvement or upgrade that we can do in the current system, right? So if we are able to get a head node with two by 16 PCIe cards, we can actually combine topology one and topology two, as, as I mentioned earlier, for connectivity as shown over here, right? Generally, you have two by 16, uh, two by 16 cards, one to uh, bridge card at slot four, one to bridge card at slot two. Right, uh, actually, this head node, the, a good candidate for such a head node is actually a Choga Pass that we'll be introducing. Actually, we introduced today, right? And then uh, this also sort of gives a good demonstration that by designing your system in a disaggregated fashion, you can scale up different parts of the system independently. Okay. 
No, so the journey to build a perfect AI system is still far from you know complete. But you know, uh, I believe that through the collaborative platform of OCP, uh, we sh we should be able to get there sooner, right? In 2006, we actually uh, 2016 we actually see Big Sur. 2017, today we actually see Big Big Basin, and actually Microsoft also showcased some of the. Uh, AI chassis that they, they have, and I'm sort of excited. I mean, I can't wait till 2018 to know, you know, what's going to be there. And uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you. Yeah, questions. Does anyone have any questions for KY? We got a few more minutes, so we have time for questions. I, I thought I'd just make a quick comment. Um, you, you had mentioned the weight of those things. I just wanted to point out, these things are deceptively heavy. I mean, they're essentially steel and rock. So um, they're actually really heavy little things, and eight of them adds up. Can kill a person with me. <laughs> yeah, pass, pass it around. <laughs> yeah, as long as people promise to give it back. You can come up yeah, and, come, see come and see it later. Yeah. Right? Yeah, do come out and see it, right? This I don't trust you. <laughs> these, these guys are amazing. What kind of problem do you guys have with the uh, OK, so first of all, SI, right? Generally, you know, longer length, you do need to run, run the cables through from one system to another system. And then uh, secondly, we, we sort of figure out there's something, something about a retimer with regards to its you know, configuration timing, whereby we actually need to skew resets between the PLX and the retirement in order to cut, having, having them come up. In the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a corner case stuff that I need to you know, skew the reset of the two PLX and the retirement because the retirement could come out and then the PLX could actually talk to each other before the lanes come out, and then they actually negotiated to a buy one. So this, this, this is the learning that we, we, we have. <laughs> so uh, you seem very, very experienced with it. <laughs> that's, that's good sharing. I hope so. We are just waiting for hate notes with more, more attachment. I think the more important is to have a wider, you know, a head note with more PCIe that is able to come out to connect. Yeah. Okay, that's all. Ten minutes. Okay, thank you, KY, and thank everyone else for coming. Thank you.